Yeah, so thank you. So uh, as you said, my name is uh, Travis Tidwell. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Form.io. We will be talking about a lot about Form.io today. In fact, this is going to be a very hands-on session. We're going to be building a an app from start to finish with Form.io. And uh, you guys are going to see what it's like to actually build a, a web application uh, within this platform. So let's talk a little bit about what serverless applications means. And I did kind of touch on this a little bit, but there's, there's a few other things, a few other aspects about serverless that's important to grasp. One is that, and as I mentioned before, the architectures are completely separate. The app exists on its own and can only talk to the back end via REST APIs. There's also another really big massive movement happening right now, which is this thing called microservices. Some of you guys have heard of AWS Lambda. This is a microservices platform where you can write these functions and then you execute those functions and you pay for the amount of CPUs that that function took. And so these apps can leverage those um, to exist and serve and you can call functions on a, on a remote server and it, it feels like you're calling those functions within the app but it's actually making calls mm -hmm. remotely. Another thing is that it leverages st stateless REST APIs. And stateless REST APIs is really the, the, where Form.io focuses itself. And stateless is important here. And what does stateless mean? A lot of people hear stateless. Okay, what does it mean to have a stateless REST API? Does that mean that your app cannot have states? Absolutely not. In fact, stateless has nothing really to do with the app. It has more to do with the back-end REST API. And what it really means is that the, the server is no longer responsible for the state of the app. That's the app's responsibility. So to give you a really good example, I come from Drupal. And in Drupal, you would log in to Drupal, and you would log in, and that would create a cookie on your browser, and that cookie would give you a session ID, and every request I made to Drupal would include this session ID. Well, what would Drupal do at that point? It would take that session ID, look up in the database, find the user object, and at that point, that person has a state that has been stored on the server. Stateless REST APIs eliminates that, and it does so through the use of tokens. Form.io uses this thing called a JWT token, where instead of the server using, like let's say Redis to store sessions, we actually hand every single user their state via a token. And it's digitally signed, so they can't muck with it. They can read it, but they can't change it. Otherwise, the dig digital signature is invalid, and we know they've changed it. And so that's actually a really good way to scale. You can scale your web services using tokens and st stateless REST APIs. Form.io is a stateless REST API platform, and I really want you, that to be a good takeaway here is because you can build an entire REST API using it. So I've given previous talks about JSON-powered forms, about APIs, about Form.io, and I've, I've gotten really philosophical, let me put it that way. I'm not going to do that in this session because I've already done that, and I've already got some videos out there that you guys can watch. This is a video that I encourage you guys to watch. If you have some time, it's about 20 minutes. And this is really kind of the philosophy behind Form.io, where I talk about JSON-powered forms and what this new movement means. When you have time, go check that out. In the meantime, I'm going to be spending my time today on actually experiencing what it's like to build an app in Form.io and what it's like to build an app using entirely REST APIs. So let's dive right in and let's actually build something with Form.io. So what are we going to be building today? Today we're actually going to be building a movie manager application. And this app is going to include user login. It's going to be to where you can build playlists. And inside that playlist you'll be able to add YouTube movies to your playlist in a grid format. I'll be able to click on those movies, watch those movies. So essentially we're going to be building a movie manager application and I know what you're thinking, there's no way we're going to be able to do that in one hour. And that's really the power that I'm going to show you with Form.io is we are going to be able to do that in one hour. We're going to have user logins, we're going to have playlist management, as well as a grid view of movies, and you're going to be able to view the movies. Um, it's a really cool application. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do whenever you, is you're going to want to be able to, you're going to actually want to log in uh, to Form.io, and actually I don't even have a, a browser up, so let me actually open up a new browser. When you first start an account, this is actually the first page you see. Um, as you can see, I've already kind of been playing around with one of these applications. This application, this existing project that you see here, 
this was actually created by me clicking on this service tracker. And what this does, any of these existing templates, what they do is they build your entire API platform for you, including all the resources, the user logins, everything, all the forms that you need to have a working application. So before we dive into building our own, let me just kind of just very briefly show you kind of what this application looks like. So here we have resources. These are all the, uh, the database um, objects that you can create. So in this application, we have customers, we have contractors. Uh, contractors are assigned appointments that they need to go to the customers to uh, service their equipment. And all of these things are forms. So whenever you're building, and I'm going to be going through all of this, whenever you're building a resource in Form.io, all you're doing is building a form. So if you guys can build a form, you guys can build your own REST API. And that's actually kind of the, the point behind Form.io. You're taking a form builder, and through the use of a form builder, you are actually building a REST API, but you just don't even know it. And the reason is, is because when you build a form, you are dragging and dropping fields onto that form and you're defining essentially a schema. And that schema can be used to generate the REST API to support it. So very briefly, let's just take a look what this application comes with. Every single app has a preview. I can log out and I can launch this into a new window. So here's an application. It has a, a user login. I can just kick, uh, log in right here. And once I log in, I can actually uh, go and create some dealers. Here's a dealer that I've already created. Once I create a dealer, I can go create some customers. Here's a customer. I'm filling in data. So this right here has an address. And with the address, I get GPS coordinates. I can go and create equipment. There's a form that you just saw. And so basically through the use of forms and data input, inputs, I'm actually able to create like this nested resource relationship so I can go create a, a contractor. There's the contractor form. So essentially what I have here is a serverless application that kind of stands on its own and only uses the APIs generated by Form.io to really do everything that it does, uh, including authentication and including data management. So let's actually start from scratch. Let's build our movie manager application. The very first thing that I like for people to do is I actually like for people to start with the default template. This actually provides you very basic user auth, which how many of you guys have been to a, an entire session where all you learn how to do is log in? I mean, there's, it's, there's some complexities there, but all you have to do is click on this default um, tab, and that actually created an application that we can actually use to build our movie manager application. So let's take a look at some of the resources that we have here. Right, right away, we just have two resources, one called user, one called admin. And I know what you're probably thinking right now. Aren't users admins? I mean, like, why don't you have just a single user table? With Form.io, the way that we built our platform is you can have buckets of data. And with the way our authentication works, you can authenticate against any one of those buckets. Um, so you can have a, a, a resource called admins and you can set up your login action to log into either users or admins. And people are assigned roles based on what they log into. So let's talk a little bit about user authentication, roles, and permissions. So that's actually lesson number one that, that's really important to understand when you're building an app in Form.io. So right here we see two uh, resources, one called user, one called admin. There's also this thing called roles. So if I click on project settings and I go over to the roles section, you'll see that I start off with two roles immediately. One which is administrator, one is anonymous, and one that is authenticated. I can create my own roles if I wanted to. So in the case of that service tracker application that you guys just saw, there's a dealer role. And dealers have certain permissions. There's a contractor role. Contractors have different permissions than the dealer. So anytime that you need to segregate permissions, that would be a good case to create a role. How, do you, how are you assigned a role? Let's talk about that. To be assigned a role is done through the actions of that resource. So here we have a user resource. If I click on that, you see a form builder. So let's say I wanted to create full name. In fact, I am going to add full name here because I want my users to give me their full name. I quite literally drag and drop a text field onto the form, call it full name, and then I hit save resource and I'm done. I've just added a field to my API as well. 
I didn't have to like edit the back end. I didn't have to edit a configuration. I just dragged and dropped a field on the form, click save, and now if I click on info, you'll see full name is right there and it's ready to go. I can submit full name to this API and it will happily accept it. You can also provide validation criteria. So all of the validation that you would normally want to do, so like let's say required, but do you want it to be unique? Minimum, maximum length, regular expression, it has to match that, but say even custom validation. All of these things you can actually write in one single place, but they're executed in both places, not only on the front end, but also on the back end. So because these are serverless apps, you kind of have to think double. In fact, developers have to think double these days. They don't anymore. Formio takes care of it. Both of those validations occur on both the front and back end at the same time. So let's talk about how is a user assigned a role. Every single time I submit this form, I end up executing the actions associated with that resource. And actions are quite literally just stackable middleware. So if any of you guys are familiar with Node, you're going to be familiar with middle, this concept of middleware. Formio is built on top of Node.js. And we've highly leveraged that concept through this use of actions within the forms. So the very first action you see here is it's going to save the submission. The second thing you see here is it's going to assign a role. So whenever I submit and add a new user to this resource, these actions will sequentially execute themselves. And so that new user role will actually get assigned the authenticated role. So now I know that if I add a new user to the user resource, they're going to have that role. If I take a look at admin, you'll notice it looks very similar. The only difference is the role assignment is giving them the role of administrator. Once a user is assigned a role, how do, how do you decide what they have access to? So authentication is all about assigning roles, assigning what that role has permission to, and then the last but not least, authenticating into that role. So the access tells you what role has access to what thing. Every single resource you create, you can decide what permissions that person should have within that resource. It's very straightforward and we're doing all of this within a UI. So now the very last thing about user authentication that you need to know about is how do you authenticate into that role. So whenever I log in, so a login would be a form and so to create that form I quite literally go to my existing resource fields and I drag this email field onto this form which you, it's, I've already done that and then this password field on there as well. And then login has a very special action. You'll notice you don't see safe submission. The reason why you don't see safe submission is because when you log in, you're not saving anything. What you're doing is you're authenticating. So I submit this form, and what I'm doing is, is I'm saying, what resources do you want to authenticate against? So now I'm saying authenticate against user and admin. And what that means is, is if I have an admin record, and I type in the email for that admin in the login form, it's going to go look up that admin, find them, and authenticate against them. Let's create two new resources. We're going to have to move quickly. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build a playlist uh, the, where you're going to create playlists. So I'm going to say playlist. I'm going to give it the API path of playlist. Your playlist may have two fields in it. Maybe the title of the playlist. And then it may have like a text area, which is the description. And I'm going to hit save. Congratulations, we're done with our playlist. So it really is that easy. The one other thing that we have to do is in our access, we have to tell it that I want, I want authenticated people to create their own playlists. If you're authenticated, you should be able to create your, create your own. So create own submissions. I'm going to add authenticated to create own, read own, update own, and delete own. I also have another requirement of my application. I want authenticated people to be able to see other authenticated people's playlists. I want this to be a community of playlists. There's one more I need to add, which is read all submissions. I want authenticated people to read all the, all the submissions. So it doesn't matter if it's theirs. If it's somebody else's, they can still read it. So immediately, I think you guys can see how you can kind of lock down things based on their role. You can kind of really refine what they have access to. And I'm going to hit save submission. We are done with playlists. Let's move on to movies. The movie, I'm just going to say movie. 
what do we want for movie? We want title. I also want another text field because I want them to use YouTube to provide the YouTube ID, which is going to be the movie. So I'm going to say, hey, just input the YouTube ID, and that's going to be your movie. And I want to basically leverage a already amazing video platforms, and uh, they just need to provide the YouTube ID. So I'm going to say another text field. For now, that's pretty much going to be it. There's one other thing. Movies are inside a playlist. So a playlist should be able to have many movies. So now we're talking about nesting relationships where movies need to be within a playlist. And the way you do that in Form.io is actually very easy. That's also another component. Think, of, think in yourself, if I were to see a form on how to create a movie where I assign it a playlist, what would that look, form look like? Well, the form would you'd provide your title, you would also see a YouTube ID, and then you might see a select drop-down that says select what playlist this movie belongs to. And we actually have a special component called resource. And this resource field allows you to relate or link this to have essentially a parent resource. And I'm going to say playlist on that, and I'm going to hit save. I highly encourage you guys, I'm not, I don't have time to go through all of these other components. We have a whole slew of amazing components. Uh, we have data grids, surveys, we have signature component, you can do e-signatures, um, you have WYSIWYG editors, I mean all kinds of cool stuff that you guys can add to your apps this way. So once we're done with that, I'm going to hit create resource, and guess what? My movie is done. I have one more thing I need to do, which is I also need to do the same permissions on the movies as well. They need to be able to create their own, they need to be able to read their own. They need to be able to authentic, uh, update their own as well as delete their own. And I also want them to read, their, read all of them. If you wanted to put an image on that movie, mm -hmm. you create a movie? Well, I'm going to show you uh, the app we're going to build is going to be able to pull in the thumbnail from YouTube. Um, so you don't have to have a field for thumbnail. You, you, there's two ways to do images. One, you can have the, the URL, pay, copy and paste the URL, or... Have we also have a file component. You already have I already have the ID, so I'm going to be able to pull the thumbnail from the ID. I'm going to show that. I'm going to show, actually show that in this app. Um, you, we also have file uploads, and our file uploads is actually amazing. It does not upload the file to our servers. The way our file uploads work is it's a direct upload to an S3 bucket from the browser. So the browser is actually doing the uploading to S, Amazon S3 directly. That returns some metadata, and that metadata is what's submitted to the form. It's a way, way more scalable way to do files in, in an app. So now that we're done with our movie resource, it's time for us to actually move on to the app. We are done with our API platform. So in a matter of no time at all, I've essentially, and you can click on the API tab, I've essentially just generated this entire API. As you can see here. And normally when you're building an app, this would take a while. Like you would be spinning and spinning your wheels building all of this. But with Form.io, you're getting all of this CRUD capability, you're getting indexes, you're getting all of these by simply building a form. And you're getting all of that. Let's actually move to launch the application. We're going to launch the application. You can actually see a preview of what we're going to start off with, which is the, the basic default app which looks like this, we're going to clone this and fork this to our local server and we're going to just start hacking it and start making this a, play, a movie, movie builder. I highly recommend people start off by clicking on the launch tab and clicking on local app development because that's kind of the, the documented workflow that we're going to follow. Okay, I'm not going to be reading this, but this is the documented workflow that we're going to go through to essentially make this app come alive. So as you see here, this app is actually connected with a GitHub repo. Now let's actually go to that GitHub repo real quick. So I'm going to go to github.com formio, formio app, and it's basic. This is a, a, a starter application that will allow you to really quickly get started. And you can go and fork and download this. And then once you fork and download it, you're pretty much to the point where I am right now. 
The first thing that you're going to want to type is npm install. I've already done that previously because I don't want to take down the network. If all of you did this right now, it would probably take down our network. So don't do that. Uh, do it when we get home. One other gotcha, and this is really annoying. And I want to make sure that I talk about this because you're going to run into this. Most definitely is what you see right here. This is actually not a problem with Form.io. This is a problem with the boot swatch theme. And the way you solve this, it cannot find that branch, is you actually uninstall it, dash dash save, boot swatch, and then you reinstall it. Bower install, dash dash save, boot swatch. And for some reason, that gets it out of that little funky state right there, um, where it actually finds the branch now, and it finds the same branch. It's the weirdest thing in the world. So here we're actually going to do an install. I'm going to just make sure that everything's installed and we're good to go. Um, I could actually type at this point gulp serve and have a running application. The thing is the very first thing that you have to do is you have to configure it to point to the API that we just generated. That's the very first step. So you're going to go over to your source code and you're going to open up this very special file called config.js. And in config.js, you're going to see this app URL, and it's going to point to, it says your app. Really, all you need to do is replace that subdomain with the subdomain that you just created. So I'm going to go over to my app that I just created. It's right here. And this actually even gives us our subdomain. It's right there. We dynamically uh, alter that in the app. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it right there. And now, whenever I type gulp serve in my application, this is going to open up a very a brand new application. Let me make sure I log out here. Oh, dang it. I've got something that's overflow, over, overlapping it. My little fork me on GitHub is, uh, we probably should move that. Hang on. Let me just, let me just delete you. Yay. Okay. So what you actually see at that point is a working application where I've got my login and my register. Let's talk about register. Didn't I add just add full name? I added full name to the user. I want to see that in my registration. Why did I not see that? Well, the reason is is because registration form is different from the resource. So the resource is here. And the form for registration is here. And all we have to do is go here, existing resource fields, and drag our full name onto that form and hit save. And the very last thing we have to do, and this will actually talk a little bit about how our safe submissions work. So registration has safe submission. Login did not, if you remember. The reason why registration has a submission is because it's actually saving the user, then it's logging them in. But it's not saving them to this specific form. It's saving the submission to the user resource. So when I click on save submission, you'll notice that there's this configuration that says save submission to user. And from there, I have field mappings. So now I just need to make sure I map the full name field in this form to the full name field in the user form. And now we've got essentially a mapped user. So whenever I register, I'm gonna have that user be created. Let's actually try it. So now, what's also another great thing about Form.io is whenever I deploy an app, let's say this app was already, was already deployed in a million people's hands, and I, had to add, I have to add a field, one single field to one form. Historically, what would you have to do at that point? You'd have to add the form to the app, and you'd have to read it, go into the App Store and redeploy your app just to get that one field to the application. With Form.io, because these are dynamically rendered forms, the next time that somebody loads the form, that field immediately shows up because it's dynamic. It's a single embed code. In fact, that what, what's adding that form right here, in fact, you can see the documentation right here, is one single line of code. It's one directive that points to that user login form. It works like an image tag. If you can embed an image into your application, you can now embed a full working form. And that includes all the I.O. behind it and everything. So let's create a user. So I'm going to go create a user in this app. 
and I'm going to submit and that's going to log me in. So once I'm logged in, I really kind of want to change this up a little bit. I want to, um, in fact, I'm just going to get out of full screen mode here. So now at this point, we're going to start making changes. We're going to, we're going to turn this into a movie management application because what I want to do is I want to make it so the first thing you see is playlists. Almost every time that I start a new app, I want to change the theme. I want it to look different. Form.io, we, for all the applications that we, we have out there, we have a number of apps. All of them are BootSwatch compatible. That was the thing that we had to reinstall at the beginning. But what is BootSwatch? So BootSwatch, if you guys go to BootSwatch.com, it's awesome. You can make your website have any different themes. So there's Carulian, here's Cosmo. This makes it look like Metro. Um, they even have one, if any of you guys use Material UI, they have one called Paper that looks like Material UI. It's awesome. If you guys want like a cyborg, like dark, start off with the dark theme, we can do that as well. I always do this. I start off with a theme that's close to what I want, and then I just gradually tweak the colors to make it exactly what I want. The one we're going to use is called Cosmo. I like that one a lot. It looks really good. The forms look really good in Cosmo. So how do you do that? So inside of your WebStorm, the very first thing we're going to look at, in fact, because we're using the basic application, I've already got all of this thing set up for you. You're going to click on this app folder inside of this index SCSS. That's a SAS file. We're going to open that up. And you'll see that I've commented out two lines here. And I've commented out these two lines just so to let you know, here's how you pull in BootSwatch. So to pull in BootSwatch, you're going to uncomment those lines. You're going to uncomment this line. And now we're ready for BootSwatch. And, and now you see these, right, these two are the two variables that you would need to change if I wanted to use a different theme. Because I'm using Cosmo, all I have to do is keep that as Cosmo. And now if I refresh my page, you'll notice my theme is awesome. It looks different. And so, I mean, like all the buttons look different and it's like blue, looks really cool. You can also tweak the colors here. So this is like SAS. So right after variables, I can actually define, you know, like what is it, primary, color, I don't know what it is exactly, you'll have to read the documentation, but I can actually change the colors here. So this is how you would tweak it, and just tweak the colors ever so gradually, and then that'll actually modify throughout the entire CSS those colors, and then you're able to kind of highly refine what you want your theme to look like. The next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to bring in the resources that I just created. I created playlist and I created movie. The very first thing that I always do is I then, I then bring those resources into the application. And that's actually surprisingly a lot easier than you think it is as well because we have a lot of helpers that help you build these applications. So going back over to WebStorm, we're going to go back to our config.js file. And inside config.js file, you'll see that there's this thing called resources. And already we see user. We're just going to add two more entries here, one for the playlist and one for the movie. So I'm going to type playlist, app URL. The URL I gave it was playlist. If you guys remember, whenever I built the form, I made the API URL playlist. And then I'm going to define a resource called playlist resource. And then I'm going to create a movie one. The form is app URL movie. And the resource is movie resource. There's only two, one other thing that I have to do to bring in my, my resources, which is just copy the existing user resource, the resource uh, object. That's a JavaScript object, and those are defined in app resources folder. So if I go to my resources folder, I'm going to copy the user, and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to create one called playlist. And I'm going to create another one called movie. Let's open up playlist first of all because I just have to rename this playlist. And then I just have to rename this movie. What did that just do? Because that just did something that's amazing. If I refreshed my application, you're not going to really notice anything, but you would if you knew all the URLs to go to. The first one is what it is is create forward slash playlist. We now have the ability to create a playlist. Let's create a new playlist. This is going to be summer movies 2016.
and I'm going to hit submit. You notice I don't have to do anything. It just does things for me. Like I didn't write I didn't write the connections to the API. It just did it. So here I've got my playlist. I can edit it. I can delete it. Let's say how do I how do I view the playlist? You'll see that if I just go to playlist URL I'll see the index of playlists. Let's create another one. Comedy movies. So now we have two movies. Now one thing that you'll probably also notice is that I'm not nesting anything right now. What I can now do is go to movie. So if I type movie, you'll see here my movies. I could say create a new movie and I could select a playlist. Now you'll notice this, oh why does that drop down look weird? Well, that dropdown looks weird because inside my movie resource, I can go click on edit. Inside playlist, there's this thing called item template. If I make that point to the title of the title field of the movie and hit save, go back to my app, hit refresh, those would now look good. Let's say you want a mini to mini relationship. Let's say like something complicated, like ch children have many parents. In a normal REST API, or you're building an app that does that, it's hard. But with Form.io, because it's all a form driven, I can quite literally just say allow multiple resources, click save, hit save submission. I now have many to many relationship, where now instead of selecting one, I can select as many as I want. So there's one other thing that I need to do, which is now inside Create Movie, I'm not really creating this inside a playlist. Could, I could assign this to a playlist, but what I would rather do is I would rather create a playlist and inside of the playlist create the movie and it just automatically knows to assign it to that playlist. And to do that, you actually create the nesting that I was referring to earlier where inside of the provider, you'll notice inside the movie provider, we have this thing called parent. Parent is basically the field in that form that defines its parent. So what was the name of the field? The name of the field was parent, I believe. And the way you look at that is you click on the, the field. Under API, it's called playlist. You can quite literally copy that, move over here, and paste. And the very last thing you need to do is under the base, the base is the URL that you want to use as the base for the movie, um, the movie paths. So I want my base to the UI router base to start at playlist period because I want to say playlist create movie to create a new movie. So playlist period is the base and when I do that you'll notice the behavior changes a little bit. So right away I'm going to say playlist there's my indexes. I'm going to click on that playlist. Now if I were to say create movie I can create a new movie in this playlist and do you guys see what just happened here? Where did the playlist field go? The playlist field is there. It's just auto-populated and hidden. It knows it's already in the context of the playlist. It already knows what its parent is. So it just it fills it out for you and hides it. So that way, whenever I create this, I'm going to have to have YouTube up here. This one right here. I like this one. Um, so I can actually go Captain America, Civil War. I'm going to just create a... This is inside my, my playlist. I'm going to say that, and I'm going to give it the ID. There's the ID of that, and when I hit submit, so it actually did make the association within that, within that, uh, within that playlist. What just happened? So now let's talk a little bit about making this look the way I want it to look. Okay, so now I've got my app working. I'm able to create movies inside playlists. Let's talk a little bit about changing this home page to where that, that should go to playlist index. In fact, when, when people log in, and I have to resize it to log in. When people log in, I want them to go, so I, I can actually use the login that I just did. I want to go right to the playlists. So if we take a look at our app here, inside the app.js, you'll notice that there's a config and inside the config we're actually providing some uh, helper uh, helpers here. So immediately what's going on is actually about 10 lines of code. Everything that, that's working so far um, is really just 10 lines of code. 
Um, and all we really need to modify, and I think you're, I think you can already see it, is this home state. Right now, this set states, this tells the auth provider, which is a helper that you use to tell it how the authentication should behave. I'm going to tell it when it logs in, I want to go to playlist index. I don't want to go to home. And so all I do is I'm going to change this home to playlist index. And then I'm also going to play, change this. Um, otherwise, go to playlist. So now let's talk a little bit about these states. Now, a lot of people, whenever they see this, they think this is like this, something magical is going on here. Like, what is going on? Like, how, how is 10 lines of code creating all of this business logic? This is where I really like to talk about it's very important right now to read the comments in these resources. That's one thing. I, we wrote a lot of really good comments in this resource file that kind of tells you all of these configurations. But this resource object is handed to a very special provider called the FormIO resource provider. And you'll see where it's handed off right here. It's registered under name, or this register name. And then I'm basically injecting that object into the resource provider. I highly recommend to go and just look at that helper. And that's under Bower Components, ng-formio helper, and go look at the source code in ng-formio-helper. And what we're going to look at is this formio resource register function. One thing you're going to see here is something that will probably look familiar if you're into AngularJS, which is UI router states being registered all over the place. We have create, read, update. Here's the, um, here's the abstract for the create, uh, read, edit, delete. There's the view. There's edit. There's delete. So really what that's doing is just registering a lot of states for you. Um, it also gives you a lot of control over what those states are doing. So you can define your own controllers that will actually get instantiated. So whenever I said playlist index, the reason why I knew how to do that is because I passed in playlist here, and this is registering a, a UI router state called playlist index, and that is the, the grid view. I don't have enough time to dive deep into this file, but I recommend you guys looking at the source code. It's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot going on there. So once I actually do that, let me actually log out and log back in. Let me refresh. And now I'm in the index. Um, so it's immediately now I've logged into the index and I can see my summer movies. The next thing that I really would like to do is I'd like to change my playlist view so that instead I see this, I want to see a grid view of all of those images. To do that, we're going to have to override a, uh, a template. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see movie. Oh, this is also something interesting. Because I did nested resources, if you go to movie underneath playlist, this will show you a filtered list of movies for that playlist like even the even the index filters for you so that if I added a new movie here but then I added a, a movie in the other playlist they're not going to conflict with each other this will only have the movies in this playlist but what I'd really like to do is make my playlist view I want it to be this so like anytime I click on view why is it doing that <laughs> so let's actually create a grid view of, of movies and then I think we'll be done and then we'll essentially have a movie manager and then I'll have, show you guys how you can uh, create a YouTube video as well. So first and foremost, I want to, um, instead of clicking on, when I click on view, I don't want to go to this page, I want to go to the movie page. And so to do that, I am actually going to go to the playlist, the playlist provider here, and I'm going to change some of these configurations. The very first one that I'm going to change is this thing called the abstract. The abstract is what I see here, the view, edit, delete. This is like a wrapper around a, a, an actual playlist object. It's called the abstract. If I override the template there, I can actually modify what that view, the state that that view tab is going to go to. So to do that, so right here I'm in templates. I want to override the abstract. Let's talk about how to do that. You're going to go up to the ng formio helper. You're going to look in templates. You're going to look under resource and you'll see that there's this one called resource HTML. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to come over to my resources 
and I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call that playlist. Inside there, I'm going to drag and drop that playlist. And you know what? I'm also going to drag this playlist up in there as well, just because I like everything to be um, organized. And I know you're probably like, well, don't you have to change where that JS file is being referred to? Um, we're using this thing called Gulp. That's what you're seeing right here. It actually figures out where scripts are, and it automatically injects them where they need to. So you don't even have to mess with that. Just, just move it. Inside that resource file, I now need to tell my provider the new path to that. that. So I'm going to say app, resources, playlist, resource.html. And then if I went in here, I could actually do something. So let's say, first and foremost, what I want to do is instead of the resource name, I like right now you see it say playlist. I want that to say the movie name first and foremost. So I can do that first and foremost. So like I can say current resource. Okay, where is that coming from? Well, that's I, I get all that question a lot. Like where are these variables being defined? That's why it's really important to look inside of the ng formio helper. And if you take a look at the abstract state, it's creating this thing already on the scope called the current resource. And it's also uh, passing, so it's actually loading the form and it's assigning that to the form, but then it's also loading the submission and it's assigning the submission, the current resource submission. By defining the form and defining that path to the, uh, the API, I can essentially, this helper is actually loading, loading that playlist object for me and assigning it to current resource. It's also assigning it to another special variable called the name of the, the, the name that I pass in. So this would be like scope playlist, uh, or actually it's up here, uh, where am I assigning it? Right here. So I'm saying scope playlist is equal to, so I could actually say playlist resource, and that'll actually point to the data object of the playlist in my template. So if I said, I could do say current resource, but I, I typically like to use the actual name. So if I say data, playlist data, title, I can get rid of this and hit refresh on that. Oh, I should. Playlist resource data title. There it is. Now what I'd like to do is change. Instead of going to view, I want to go to movie index. And this will now, and also this um, is active, I need to change that as well, movie index, that'll do my. So now if I click on that, I now see view, and there we go, edit view. Yeah, so that's actually showing the movie index. What I wanna do is now change that into a grid of movies. I'm gonna change the index view of the movie. So inside movie, I gotta move quick, sorry guys, I'm gonna create a folder called movie. Drag this in there real quick. I'm going to go copy the index. I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to get rid of this grid view for now. And instead I'm going to replace it with just like hi, just so that I know that I did it. And then in here I'm going to change the path to app resources movie index.html. And so now what that should do is there my, there's my high. What, so what I want to do is I want to create a grid view of movies here. Uh, forgive me, I am going to copy and paste on this next section um, just because we're, we're running out of time and I want to make sure I get through all of this. If you go to Formio app movie, you're going to have the entire application source code available to you. So inside here I've got resources, I've got movie, I've got index, and I'm just going to copy and paste this inside the movie index. And there's one other thing, oh, <laughs> that's funny, um, is I need to include this thing called this, this pagination. This is Angular Paginate Anything. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that library allows you to add pagination to certain views. 
Um, all of our APIs are compatible with this li that library. So you can type Bower install, save, Bower install, save, and then it's Angular, paginate, anything. And then I just need to, inside of my app folder file, app.js, I'm going to include that as a module. App, and I'm going to include that as a module right here. And then the very last thing I need to do is override the controller. And to override the controller, because I need to provide some new variables to my index, I can go in here and essentially override any of these controllers. And what's great about Form.io is it really gives you access to everything. You get full API access. Uh, for example, let's say you want to do something special when a submission is made. You can just trigger on the form submission event and then do something. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do here. So I'm just going to delete this. And instead, I'm going to copy and paste. <laughs> Forgive me. In this, I've got a lot more stuff going on, too. So you guys can. I'm just going to copy this. And really, all I'm doing is providing the URL um, to the to the index, that's what I'm doing here. Here's my, um, here I'm passing the, the URL to the form, and then I, here I'm actually filtering the, uh, the movies based on the playlist, and then the state params is providing me the playlist ID because I'm using UI router. I have that playlist ID within the state params. So hopefully if all that went well, I didn't miss anything. I need to gulp serve. Click on that. I do need to fix that, and I'll show you how to fix that. Um, if I click on that, I now see um, what looks to be like it's trying to work. Um, what is this doing? This is, I know what it is. Inside, this is important. When, whenever you're actually uh, using like YouTube, you also need to provide this thing called this, this filter um, called trusted so that the so that it will actually accept the URL. So at the very top here, I can I can do it there. That doesn't matter. I can do it there. Let me see if that helped. Come on. And the other thing that it might be is I named a variable different. So this is looking playlist ID. Inside here, you'll see I'm doing date movie data YouTube ID. This probably is going to end up being that. I bet that's what I ended up doing wrong. Let's see if that was it. Oh, there it is. So to make sure you get your keys right. That key you find here inside this YouTube ID, that. Just make sure you get that right. I think whenever I previously built this, I didn't capitalize the T. That's an easy fix. So now we have this. Let's actually fix this one other problem. I need to fix that home button. Um, that's going to be in the index.html. And whenever they click on home, I don't want them to go to home. I want them to go to playlist index. Yeah, let's do one last thing, which is whenever they click on the movie, I want to actually show a video. And to do that, I'm going to just modify the view of the movie. So I'm going to go up to templates, and I'm going to provide a new page called App Resources Movie View. And in here, I'm going to create a new HTML file called View. Just for now, just make sure it's getting it. Yep, it is. And then what I can then do is inside of my movie, I've got a movie view here, I can show the YouTube URL. So now this, I need do need to change this tube. And then I also need to provide, there's this variable called YouTube that I'm adding to the view controller. 
which is really just the URL to the movie. So if I click on movie.js, if I go to the view, you'll see right here, and I'll, I'll explain what this is doing after I do it, after I copy and paste. You'll, you'll notice what I'm doing here. I can't just set the YouTube URL immediately because when the page loads, I don't really quite have the movie object loaded yet. And so that's why these, these helpers provide this very important promise called the load submission promise. And that gets triggered, you can call the then, when that submission is fully loaded. So I could say scope movie load submission promise then. From there, I'm actually passing in the YouTube ID to that so that whenever now I view it, I've got my movie. So now let me create some more movies here. I'm going to just go the darkness. And this is easy. I can just go double click the playlist ID, submit. There's the darkness it's showing up. Um, there's another one. And I could host this on GitHub Pages also. That's another th great thing about these apps is they're serverless. I can put this uh, anywhere I want. Um, so now I've essentially got a movie application. I can also, in a, you notice in this, in this I don't have anything. So let me add a comedy movie. Angry Birds, I guess I could be considered comedy. And now you'll see kind of where we're getting that nested resource relationship and filtering taking place so that now comedy movies has just that one, summer movies has those, and we've essentially built an entirely working playlist managed movie management application in an hour. We did that in an hour. There's one other thing that I want to show you guys, which is the, the bootstrapping that I was telling you guys about. So let's say you guys want to go home and you're just so anxious to get started with this immediately, but you're lazy, like every developer. And you just want to get this up and running as fast as possible so that you can um, start hacking it. We actually created this, this utility called Bootstrap, Formio Bootstrap. And that actually allows you, let me just show you, you just have to install our CLI. And the CLI is just NPM, and let me zoom in on that real quick. Is NPM install dash, dash, dash G, and I think it's Formio dash CLI. So once you install that, you have access to this utility called Bootstrap. So I type Formio Bootstrap, and then all you do is find the GitHub page of the app that you want to bootstrap. So this is the app that we were using. This is Formio app, uh, movie app. All I need is essentially like the GitHub path, which is Formio, Formio app movie. Now before I hit enter, I want to, to kind of explain what's about to happen because I think it moves so fast, it's hard to figure out what just happened. Inside of this repo is a very special file called project.json. This project.json file is an export of the Formio project. You guys can do this yourselves. You guys can go create a Formio project. And once you're done with your Formio project, you can go to Project Settings and click the Export Project button. That's going to give you a JSON file. That's what this is. That export is linked to the app that's needed, that's linked to that API platform. So the Bootstrap, what it does is it goes to this repo, looks for that JSON file, creates the project on Formio, automatically configures the config.js file and it runs your app so that in one click you can essentially log into your account so the account that I'm using is just a demo account it authenticates, it downloads the project extracts it, creates it on Formio and now we have an entire working application at this URL that is being hosted right here. It just created this movie manager. And so now I can actually create 
And you guys, with one single command, you guys can go and play around with this and have a full working movie management application. So I'm going to create a new playlist. And you'll see kind of what uh, what we do here. So I'm going to create a new movie. I'll just do, do Angry Birds just to show you kind of what, what we got. You've already kind of got a gist of how the how the app works. And so now you'll see that this also adds like little tiles to all the playlists. So anybody can go create an account on here. I could push this up to GitHub pages. And now essentially what we've done is have a social app sharing environment. You can create an app, create your Formio project, commit that to GitHub, and as people fork it, they can type Formio Bootstrap and quite literally bootstrap an entire working application right there on their local computer. And so that's kind of where we're headed with this. We're headed towards this auto API generation, creating apps with a single click of a button, and being able to share this. So imagine, imagine having distros. Imagine having something for, for con like conferences. And if you want to start up your conference website, you type Formio Bootstrap Conference, and you hit Enter. And it basically builds the REST API, and it forks the uh, repo on GitHub for you. And now, and then you just commit that to GitHub Pages, and now you're hosting your entire conference off GitHub Pages in Formio. Um, all of that is possible with this platform, and it's an entire API platform. And hopefully, this illustrates really just kind of the, the what you can do with it. There's a lot of lot of amazing things that you can do with with Formio.